Welcome, I'm Dr. Hisi. Before we begin, and in case you weren't already aware, I'd like to bring up that I have a rather special skill set for my profession, telepathic abilities. Do I have permission to read your mind? Not at all. I don't usually read minds unless I feel it important to dip in, so to speak, to understand better what is going on in your head, such as to help people who can't find the words or don't want to speak. Sometimes it is easier to show images in your head rather than trying to describe it all. I like to start off my sessions asking in advance, especially since this is the first session of ours. Normally, I'll ask next to questions we might find useful to use that skill with. With this session, I prefer to start right off with getting us all on the same page. Of course, this is the preliminary session, so it will mostly be about whatever you'd like it to be, possibly setting any goals, prominent things in your mind that you'd like to discuss. In my particular specialty, I am aware and open to any type of being as well as discussions around them. Witches are free to levitate items, werewolves can spend their time as a wolf as I read their minds, vampires may have their preferred drink of choice or run in as fast a circle as they'd like if stillness becomes too much. You don't need to have any powers to be here. My only requirements are that you are willing to go on this process with me and that you are aware of the existence of such magic. It makes it easier on both of us to not have to try and use metaphors or remember not to slip up in places, and I think at times it can be helpful to know that this office is a fully safe space to discuss such things without worrying of exposing things meant to be hidden. I'm glad to hear that. So before I start with the questions, do I have permission to read your mind? It's absolutely fine. You don't have to say yes. I won't read your mind and I won't pester you about it throughout our meeting. I want you to feel free to advocate for yourself. That's what you're doing by coming here in the first place. Taking care of yourself and I support you in that decision. You don't ever have to agree to the question if you don't want to, or anything I say for that matter, okay? Good. Let's begin. Where would you like to start with this meeting? Are you working towards any personal or professional goals, or is there some type of situation or thought you'd like to discuss? We can do as much as your time slot allows, but I would say it's often better to focus on one thing at a time, and please don't feel obligated to choose a right one. The only right one is the one you choose. Try picking whatever is weighing the heaviest on your mind. What pushed you to my office today? Really, what kind of weird instances? These small explosions, is anyone getting hurt? That's a relief, so they're more like popping, such as a light bulb being blown. With pretty colors. <laughs> well, that is an odd occurrence, I'll grant you. Is this happening at your home, or...? Just at home, and do you live with anyone else? Have they experienced similar things? Only around you. I see. Have you any reason to suspect that you may have been cursed, either potentially upsetting someone, whether or not they directly have magic, or touching some object unfamiliar to you that could have been influenced? Nothing out of the ordinary. Hmm. Oh yes, I know Melinda and her dragon Gianna, lovely little creature. 
She did. And what did she say? And that's good. Melinda is a thorough investigator. If she doesn't think it's a curse, then I'm inclined to agree with that professional opinion. If it isn't a curse, then it could be a few other things. Possibly it's a haunting, residual magic, a shift in the magic outside the house, or even a shift in the magic inside you. I know you don't have magic, but those skills can develop later in life, unlike with more creature-based magic like werewolves and vampires. Magic in its more loosely defined form, such as Melinda's, doesn't always show up immediately. Sometimes there's something that can trigger it or it just naturally ebbs and flows with you. We all have magic. How much is the question? Not that it can't be learned, per se. It's more like you have a glass of water, where that water is your magic. Some people have a very small amount, but others are born with it, overflowing and magic cascading everywhere. Others have it mostly full. I could fall into that category, for example. A bit more magical than the average person, perhaps, but no light shows or potions from me. And then there are those whose water is frozen at whatever level, and as they age, that ice begins to melt, and then we find out, is it a little amount, a fair amount, or is it now overflowing? Sometimes the ice will melt slowly, resulting in odd occurrences here and there, or other times it'll melt fast, just as with study, and suddenly you have a new skill set to adjust to. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad it helps, but remember, that is only one option. I do think it's a likely one, though I'd, I'd have expected these little explosions to be following you around everywhere, not just around your home. So, let's maybe start by ruling out the other three before we revisit you having magic. How does that sound? An easy one we can look at first is the residual magic. Since you know Melinda, did you brush against anything while you were there? Have you come in contact with anything, or possibly even anyone, especially fae or witches, that can give off magical energy in the time before and during it happening? Or has your roommate? Certainly, I think it could be a good question to ask them. I don't think that if it is coming from your roommate that it is intentional at all, but since it's centered in the house, we have to consider everything in the house. So we'll put that as an unlikely, but leave it open in case your roommate has a different answer. Next would be shifting magic outside the house. This could be one of the things we discussed that's occurring in a neighboring home or even potentially at work that might charge you, in a sense, with friction or static? Are these events happening more on one side of the house than the other? Mainly in the kitchen. Hmm. That's indicative, usually, of kitchen witchery, but as well, there's also more power sources of all the elements in there, so it's possible it just happens to be the perfect storm of items altogether. Do you have a gas top oven? Hmm, that's a flame. Water from the sink, the fan circulates the air, and you have your pick of earth elements from the spices, herbs, and other such foods in your kitchen. You wouldn't need to be cooking or touching them necessarily, but we're getting off track. Our focus is on the outside of the house. Does the kitchen border a neighboring home, or is it more in the center? Have you noticed any particular changes in that house recently? New occupants? Heard of anyone receiving an old heirloom? Anything new? It's empty. That's interesting. Did these occurrences begin before or after your neighbor moved? I 
see. It's possible that they were channeling some type of energy and without that guidance it could be coming towards the next center of influence, the center being you, but that sort of wraps back to you developing magic. You could think of it as the heat warming up the ice in your glass and stirring things up. This is all speculation. I doubt we'll figure it all out in one visit, but I do hope we can rule out quite a bit, and if you don't mind, I'll give you homework to document when, where, and what happens with these occurrences. Who else was there? How were you feeling? What were you thinking about? Really, any details you can remember, and then we can see if a pattern emerges. Also see, perhaps, if a discussion with your roommate can shed light on anything else as well. It doesn't need to happen all at once. Just take it a day at a time. I understand that, but you have survived all these little magical outbursts so far, and you will continue to do so. I know that. And really, I know just tracking things doesn't seem like it truly identifies the issue and fixes it, but awareness is always the first step. I would be doing you a disservice to just prescribe things without identifying what needs to be addressed. I can send you some small daily tutorials for stresses and anxiety reduction that you can practice as well. They're good in general and may help with this. Wonderful, I'll make a note. Before we wrap up our session, I do want to circle back to the work environment as well to finish out our assessment of all possible things. Has there been any changes at work? Well, congratulations on your promotion. That's quite exciting. Have you found your stress increasing with that? A little is understandable, as long as it isn't too much. What about with others? Or the space itself? Did you get a new office space with your promotion? Interesting. If I can press upon you for some additional homework, Maybe you can ask Melinda about it, or we can provide some resources of, of bringing in a concentration stone or object. Stones are just traditional. They could charge and focus good positive energy for, and keep in your new office to cleanse the space and keep it feeling more yours and positive. I'm glad that sounds nice. I'll add that to the list of resources to send you. You can do it yourself, of course, but if you're nervous about it or want to ensure your belief in it, someone like Melinda could help you make one. It's possible to make one for the kitchen as well, but since that is a shared space, I think it would likely not be as helpful. As well, I don't recommend adding too many things in at once. We want to see what's working and adjust, not throw spaghetti at the walls. Wonderful. Well, I think our first introductory meeting has gone quite well, don't you think? <laughs> no, I wouldn't know. You asked me not to read your mind, so I haven't. Well, I'm glad the answer is yes. I'll be sending you the information as we discussed. You can schedule your next appointment with my secretary on your way out. If you should have need of us before then, Please do call and we'll try to bring you in, and remember to track these occurrences so we can have more data to work with, but know you are safe because you are powerful, magic or not. Farewell.